bringing that the realities of it because those things happened for a shadow and then we went to the second class and we're looking at casting out of one seed knowing what we worship the casting out of one seed and we saw that of these two children of christ one set will be cast out for a time and we focus very much on that uh, uh, text a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the lord for 10 generations shall he not enter into the congregation of God. And we're saying, this is God. But people don't know <laughs> that this is how God is. It's part of knowing what we worship. God has said a bastard will not enter. And we're looking at the innocence of a child that is born. A child that is born an Israelite. Born, not being committed anything. Not being doing anything. They just born him. But because of the way he came in, he is cut off from the presence of God until a certain time. He said, for 10 generations. And we're saying, this is God. And this person has not changed. The way people relate with God is like the God of the Old Testament. It's a different God that we are relating with now. No. It's the same, it's the same, same, same person. What he has always required is what he still requires. To, he has always required a blood sacrifice. Right from the beginning, he still requires that thing today. And that's why the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ speaks continually. See, so it's the same God. So when he said a bastard shall not enter, the change of testament does not change that thing. The, it only brings us into a better understanding of that reality. And so we're looking at it also. What a bastard is, an illegitimate child. Person coming in, yes, a child of God, yet a Christian. But the channel, there's a problem with how it came in. And if you bring that into Christianity, then we'll find there's a group who really, they are children of God, but they are bastards, illegitimate. They came in by a mingling of seed. They came in by a mingling of seed outside the channel that the seed was supposed to be mingled. Praise God. And we saw how the book of Revelation also said, the rest of the dead live not until a thousand years. As we accomplish. That's what we're saying. After that thousand years we accomplish, some people will be brought in. That's what the scripture said. So what is it? It is that scripture that is being fulfilled. That to the general assembly, the general assembly, when, when there's that general meeting in the morning, all the saints that have slept rise up and gather. Some people will be excluded from that thing because of how they came in. See? Praise God. And then we went to the third class. And in that third class, we're looking at another program of God. With the usual program that people know is the program of salvation. God um, for God so loved the world that he gave his son and begotten son and all that and all that that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and things like that. The pro program of God that is, well, I, I would say known anyway, but not as though they understand how that program operates even, that program of God unto salvation. It is one thing to know that God saves. It's another thing to know how God saves. So not as though they know how he saves, but it's a generally... Uh -huh. God is Savior, God is Savior, uh -huh. and all that. Christ is Savior, Christ is Savior. Good. Now that's just the program of God, but we're looking at another program that God also runs. And he said, he said make the heart of the people fat. Let their, their table become a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. It was God doing it too. And there was a reason. He said when you spawn his, his, his way, for, for salvation, then he enters into another program with that person where he begins to deceive the person. He leads the person to destroy the person. So, so he said, if a prophet be deceived, I, the Lord, I have deceived that prophet. Is, that's is him. Is him. So the, 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 the channel, he said, make the table. The table, he said, everybody eats from a table. 
Now, when he makes that table a stumbling block, he scatters that, that place from which a person receives. He scatters it. Now, because it is scattered, then that thing becomes, causes the person to stumble. And we use Saul, you know, um, Ahab. We were using Ahab as an example the other day. You see, he, he, his table was the prophet's. That's where he usually receives from. Now, when God wanted to destroy Ahab, lead him to destruction, then he needed to confuse that table. He needed to make that table a stumbling block. So, that place from where he received, they began to minister what will destroy him. Now, the spirit that ministered to uh, the prophets, too, is where they received from. Now, he gave them, he confused that their own table. So, the prophet received wrong and give wrong. Praise God. Now, it is a program that God runs. He said, for this cause, I, the Lord, will send upon them a spirit, a strong spirit of deletion. It is him that is doing it. It is another program that God runs. So that was the third class. And now, maybe we will, we will stop at this class here today. And in the next two classes, we have two Sundays until the end of the year. In the next two classes, we'll, we'll be taking a review of all that we have taught. So, those that have... <laughs> ...learned so far, how far we have fed. If you have questions to anything that we have anything that we have in the year, we'll be looking and see how much we've been able to for the next God's grace. Let's see how the brethren fare. Remember in the scriptures. So he said, let's go back and see how we've been teaching. We don't teach past year, teach past year, teach past year, teach past year. He said, now let's go back. And let's see how all those brethren we have taught fair. So that's what we'll be doing in the next two classes. We'll put a pause to teaching. And then we'll go back and see how far we have been able to learn this year by God's grace. But I trust that we, the Lord has been gracious unto us. The Lord has actually, he has actually given us, the lines have fallen for us in pleasant places this year. Praise God. On this subject, knowing what we worship, to this class, we are looking at the required righteousness. The required righteousness. I would like to start on this note that to call our attention to, to the, effect, the effect of the gospel that is usually taught or preached today, the effect of the gospel that many, many teachers, preachers, pastors, and all, the effect, one of the effects of that thing, I'd like to call our attention to it first. Now, when we listen to teachers or preachers today, there's, there's this way, uh, the gospel that they, ha that they teach or preach, there's this way it makes people very comfortable. It makes the, the it makes the people feel at ease. It, like like salvation is very easy. Uh, salvation is very easy. Now it's a general thing. You hear people like um, Pastor Chris. You hear people like uh, 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 Pastor Adeboye. People like um, uh, sorry, Tunde Bakari. You see um, this great uh, yes. These great preachers in, in the land, as it were, you hear them speak, or hear them teach, and it's like, it's like, it's like, in short, it's like you're already in heaven. It's like you don't, you don't arrive, you have, you have arrived, you already, you've reached where you're going. Yes, you have made it in life, see? And then, it's it sometimes referred to, it sometimes they refer to it as the simple gospel. So you want, maybe you want to try to, take them into certain aspects and they say, just preach the simple gospel. Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. 
just give your life to him. Confess uh, and believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. And then that's it. You are saved. From then on, however you like to carry yourself, whatever you like to do after you believe, whatever you like to do after you say you believe, whatever you like to do after you have confessed, that's completely up to you. But all these things are in the heart and stuff like that. So it's very easy. It's very convenient. And, and, and it's, it's, it, the effect is like, it's like it, many people will be saved. Or it is very easy to be saved. Yes, that's the, that's the effect, one of the effects of the gospel today. And that thing, they call it grace. They, they target grace. We are no longer under the law. We are under grace. The dispensation of grace. So, so you can just do anyhow and um, you can misbehave. You can do anything you want to do. Yeah. So, so God is we, we understand very merciful. And so there's this, that that thing that they preach, this is the effect it's great. People have come to the place where they believe that salvation is easy. And, and, and in short, many people will be saved. In short, many people are saved. We are seeing them now. Many people are saved and stuff like that. Okay. Now, uh, and I believe, I believe this is also a part of why Christ said certain things he said. Now, he said, he said, take heed what you hear. Be careful what you hear. See, it's because, see, salvation starts from hearing. That's where it begins, from hearing. You see, I, I, the, 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 um, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it begins from what you hear. The mark of the beast begins from what you hear. Maybe we'll address the subject sometime next year. The mark of the beast. What you hear. Now, people are waiting for tattoo, CCC, uh, some writing, or some injection, or something. <laughs> the mark of the beast. Okay. But there's the mark of God. And God is a spirit. The mark of a spirit cannot be a physical mark. The beast is a spiritual power. The mark of the beast cannot be a physical mark. When people don't understand this, you just go around and waiting for 66 or looking for co combination numbers, uh, they, they write it on somebody's head and stuff. But you don't know that those who believe God, there's something on their head. In their head. Who, by God's grace, see these things next time. But, but he said, take heed what you hear. But people are not even careful. Concerning what people can listen to anything, people can hear anything, people can believe anything. It just, so long as that thing was presented in Jesus' name, see, people can receive anything. People are not careful. Any preacher, anybody that comes in preaching, come, it's a preacher. So long as then just don't let the person do any sign at all. Come, don't just let the person. Prophecy or, or, or do, do run the same or something. Kai, Kai, Kai. Anything the person says after that is swallowed. So people are not even careful with the things they hear. But Christ said, Be careful what you hear. As people, we are supposed to be very sensitive to what we hear. It can abort our, our, it can abort our salvation race. You, you hear something and it just terminates. That thing you are doing. Okay. Now, um, we'll read a couple of scriptures and see my, my fellow teacher. <laughs> um, now, let's see how the gospel of Christ, the effects, the, gos the gospel of Christ produced in the people when he preached the gospel. Um, Matthew 19, 23. Matthew 19, 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew 19, 23. Yes, 23 to 26. Then I will read Luke 13, Luke 13, 22 to 24. Matthew 19, 23 to 26. I will read Luke 13, 22 to 24. Please, let's hear. Okay. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, then Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, Verily I say unto you, That a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. A, a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And all that is usually taught today is how to make you rich here. Yeah. And don't forget that the richer you are, the more difficult the salvation journey gets. He said it, you know, the person that brought the salvation said, he said how difficult it is for a rich man to make heaven. <laughs> the, the bulk of the teaching is prosperity, how to increase, how to enlarge your course, how to conquer, how to inherit, how to it's okay. But don't forget that it is hard to, for a rich man. As you are growing big, it is hard to... Uh, the bigger you get, the harder it becomes. So, <laughs> we did not say it's impossible, but he said how hard. It is even easier for a camel to pass through a needle's eye. That thing we said in Jerusalem, that narrow entrance. It is easier for a camel, as tall as it is, to go through that thing. than for a rich man to enter inside heaven. Okay. 25. Yes. When his disciples heard it. Now, when his disciples heard it. They were exceedingly amazed. They were exceedingly amazed. Saying. Saying. Who then can be saved? Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them. But Jesus beheld them and said. With men, this is impossible. With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Thank you, sir. With man... A, a, a rich man entering into the kingdom of God is impossible. If you leave it in the way, in the wisdom of man, the operation of how man operates riches, it is impossible. A rich man cannot enter the kingdom of God. But the only grace there is that with God, all things are possible. So with God, with the wisdom, that, with the direction that God gives us on how to use wealth, on how to operate riches here, it becomes possible for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. But see the effect. When he's finished talking, then the people that heard him said, oh, who then can be saved? So there was something that they were getting from the gospel that was being preached. That it is hard. So much hard that they were not even seeing how it is possible for somebody to be saved. That's the effect. Now, let's read, let me read Luke 13. Then we'll read another page. Um, we'll read John 6, 16 to 61. So, I'll read John 6, 60 to 61 and 66 to 67. Um, John 6, 60 to 61, then 66 to 67, then may I read the Luke 13, 22 to 24. Okay. Now, and he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. So, watch what was happening. Christ was teaching. Now, then come to verse 23. Then one said unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? I want you to understand that he was coming. As he was going through, journeying towards Jerusalem, he was teaching in the villages. Now, those ones that were with him, and they were hearing the things he was saying, prompted them to ask this question. Lord, are there few that be saved? Now, it is part of the effect of the teaching that he was teaching. So that the people, the way, the, the way he was talking, he was not talking as though it is many people that will be saved. And he was not talking as though it was easy. 
So then they asked him, hey, this thing I say, it's, it's like it's not many people that will be saved. <laughs> okay. Now, then he began to say unto them, strive to enter in at the straight gate. Difficult. Difficult. Straight is difficult. Strive to enter in at the difficult gate. So why do people say salvation is as easy? Simple gospel. Where did it come from? It's saying, he that brought it said, strive. Stru to strive is to struggle. Yes. To enter at the difficult gate. So the beginning, the beginning, the gate is the entrance. The beginning first is difficult. And he's saying, strive to enter at that gate that is difficult. He said, for many I say unto you, will seek to enter in. Now, are you seeing? People will try to enter. It's not as though they will just decide that we want to live uh, with, uh, we, want, we, want to be, we want to be smoking. We want to be, uh, we want to be drunkards. We want to be prostitutes. We want to be fornicators. No, not those ones. Not those ones. Those ones are not, those ones are people of this place. Yes, they are not going anywhere. Yeah. But there are people that have seen a kai, 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 this thing, this kind of life. God abhors it. God hates it. And then they will turn from that thing. And the turning point is to try to enter in. So he said, they will be seeking to enter, but they will not be able to. How, how did this gospel become such a simple gospel? It's, uh, that the effect is like everything is easy. Just easy. So long as you believe in your heart. So long as you, you confess with your mouth. This is the person that brought to the gospel. This is the salvation talking. And he's saying it is difficult. The beginning first is hard. If you read, if we read this forward, or read in another place, he began to say, he began to say that the gate, straight is the gate, and then the way is narrow. So, you know, the gate is not at the end now. The gate is at the beginning. So the entering at the gate is, is difficult first. Then when you enter, the way gets your own wahala. How is salvation journey? Easy journey. Okay. Now, um, please, the John chapter 6, 60 to 61. Yes. Many therefore of these disciples, when they had, when they had heard this, said, this is an hard saying. Now, he has said something. And then, when many people heard what he said, then they said, this is a hard saying. Who? Can hear it. Who can accept it? Who can believe this one? This is Jesus that is the gospel. It's when he has taught, he said, This is the yard. Who will believe this one like this? Okay. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, He said unto them, Does this offend you? This one, the Diversity. What am um, what and um, if ye shall see the Son of Man uh, okay. ascend up where he was? Before. Okay, sixty-six to sixty-seven. Sixty-six. Yes. From that time, many of his disciples went back. Now, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Uh, they say we don't follow this one again. <laughs> Then the, said Jesus unto the twelve. Then he nasty turn and face the twelve. Will you also go away? Will you also go to? <laughs> then that's what they said. To whom shall we go? Now this is the effect of the gospel that Christ preached. John eight forty three. Right, we are still on the same John. John eight forty three. John eight forty three. Yes. Uh, when I read uh, Matthew thirteen thirty four. Then you read John 8, 43. Matthew 13, 34. Matthew 13. Okay. Matthew 13, 34. Now, 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 all these things, if you read from the beginning, all these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables. And without a parable, speak he not unto them. John 8.43. 8, yes. 
Why do you not understand my speech? Why do you not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Even because ye cannot hear my word. Thank you, sir. See, when he began to speak for salvation's sake, to save, he said, without a parable, speak he not unto them. He did not open his mouth except he was going to say it in a way that they will not understand. Then he came to the other place. The, the, then the, the people were not understanding his speech. Then he began to ask them, oh, why you don't understand my speech? He said, because, because you cannot hear my word. This, when you put all this together, you, you get the, one of the effects of the gospel that was preached by the Lord Jesus. One of the effects was that people felt it was a difficult thing to be saved. People thought that it was almost even impossible to truly be saved. People thought that it was difficult to receive the things that he was saying. Another priest said they were astonished at his doctrine. People were, that's, he said something, he shocked. Eh, eh, eh? He shocked. So, so, so when he said, when he said, he looked at the Jews as they were killing lamb, as they were continuing the sacrifice. Then he, after everything, then he said, he said, he said, except you believe in me, he said, you are dead. Except you eat my flesh, you have no life in you. Juzo. Then that one shocked them. He <laughs> shocked them. Then he said, he said, ah, ah, our fathers ate bread in the wilderness and, and, and what, 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 are you, what are you giving us? He said, he said, oh, your fathers ate bread in the wilderness and they are dead. Eh? Our fathers. <laughs> Israelites under the covenant are dead. He said, but the Father gave you the true bread that came down from heaven. Then he told them in another place that you people, you people are just very fine people. He said, but inside filled with dead men's bones. You people are dead. He's talking of Christians. Now, when we tell, when we speak today and we say, we say, see, Denominationalism, this form of Christianity that is under denominationalism, Anglican, Methodist, Baptist, I'm an Anglican, and you are dead. It'd be like saying they shock people. Now, this is what the gospel of Christ looks like. Ah, you mean, you mean, we'll see it soon now. You mean all these things because they were continuing in the laws, they were continuing in the services, but Christ was telling them, you are dead. And they couldn't just put it together. We'll read it later. He said, he said, now, they, they actually believed that they had eternal life. It's not today that people started believing in eternal life now. They believed that they had eternal life. They said, he said, set the scriptures. In them you think you have eternal life. He said, but those scriptures are the very things that are telling you that what I'm saying, that you are dead, is true. They are the ones that testify who I am. See? So, so, people too believe that they have it. But we are saying, we are saying, you have a name that you live, that you are dead. It they shock people. Hey, this is what the gospel looks like. You see, I just said we should start like this. So that we are addressing the subject of the required righteousness. So you see, now if the effect of the gospel that men preach today makes it look like salvation is easy. Makes it look like, in short, everybody is saved. Makes it look like salvation is for everybody. That's another thing. It's like salvation is for everybody. Then Christ came and said, Christ came and said, to you, it is given to understand, but to them, it is not given. So because it is not given unto them, these things are done in parables. He, he himself con concluded that salvation is not for all. He said, because if I say it in a way that they understand it, then they will turn it around. Then they will repent. Then I have to heed them. But I don't want to heed them. So, the, if the effect of 
the gospel that is being preached today seem to make people understand that it is easy to be saved. Salvation is simple. The gospel is simple. Then, what we are saying is that the scripture has been fulfilled. There is another gospel. Yes, this is, this is another gospel that is being preached. That's how to know. When the scripture said, because, okay, let's read it. Um, let's read 2 Corinthians 11, 4, then Galatians 1, 6 to 9. 2 Corinthians 11, 4, from verse 4. Oh, right. Then Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to 9. Corinthians 11 verse 4. Yes. Second Corinthians. For if if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Now a, a preacher is coming. Our preachers are coming. Now if he that is coming preaches another Jesus. Whom we have not preached. Now people don't even understand that these things are here. Now what does another Jesus look like? Because he said that some people will come. Now this it just means that some people will come and preach another Jesus. Now, how you will know that it is another Jesus is by the effects of what they are preaching. So that's why I read, so that we we'll see the effects of the true Jesus. What the true Jesus preached. Now, what the true Jesus preached was handed over to us. He said, he said, he said it was delivered unto us by them that heard him. It was handed over to us. Then he said, go and teach all nations. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have taught and commanded you. Now, this is the Jesus. But then another Jesus will come. And how you will know that they are preaching another Jesus is that the effects, what, the effects of it, is you are going to be seeing that it will be different from the effect when Jesus, from the true Jesus when he preached. Praise God. So if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, preaches another Jesus whom we, we have not preached. Now whom we see there must be a base. There must be a base. And the base I don't know how to say it now. The base is not, not the, this. The base now it did not say preaches another Jesus, whom Jesus did not preach. No, Jesus is the preaching. Then there's a base. There are those that are custodians of Jesus. Yes, a foundation. That's where we are standing. So if he that come and preach at another Jesus, whom we this we are human beings. They are men. Yes. These are the apostles. Mm -hmm. These are the place where we stand. So in every generation, there is a base. We will see toward the end of the class. Like, see, he said, unto the angel of the Laodicean church, right? This thing said, now that person, when he begins to minister, he becomes a base. Now if he that come and preach another Jesus, whom this base has not preached. Mm -hmm. There's a problem. Yes. Okay, so he said, or if ye receive another spirit, or if you receive another spirit, that's why we were saying just now, the, what you receive begins from what you hear. Mm. The spirit that comes in begins from what you are hearing. So he said, or if you receive another spirit, which ye have not received. Now, which ye have not received previously. Or another gospel. Or another gospel. Which ye have not accepted. Which ye have not accepted. Ye so, might well bear with it. You bear with it. That was the fear. Okay, I'll read um, Galatians. Galatians chapter 1 from verse 6. He said, I marvel that ye are, soon, ye are so soon removed from the grace of him that called you into the grace of of Christ unto another gospel which is not another that is they, they, they carry another book and come it's, it's not another uh -huh. but it is another you see 
it, it's another gospel. But it is not another because it, they, they are not coming, they did not come and preach in Muhammad's name. They did not carry, come and carry Quran. It's still Bible and it's still Jesus' name. But it is another gospel. So he said, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So, when the gospel of Christ is perverted, the effect changes. That's why we started by the effect of the gospel today. It's like it's easy to be saved. Preach the simple gospel. And Jesus loves you. The salvation is not hard. This sin. The effects change. Now it says, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And again we say, if another man preach another gospel unto you that ye have not received, let him be accursed. See, there's the effect of the gospel. Now, it is under this effect, it is under this effect, now, if you read like this, that's how you understand why Christ said that if you want to receive that, I'm, I'm quoting Luke 6, 48. He said, he that will build the house, he said, he, said, he will dig deep. You dig deep. He said, like, he will dig deep and then find the rock. Now, when you find the rock, he said, then you anchor that thing on top and build on top of it. So, so, how does digging dig? Be- become an easy something. On the rock, you, you are digging inside a mix of stones and elements. You are digging deep to find the rock. Dig deep. Then when you find it, you anchor. Put your building on top of that thing. Then he said, when he put it like that, he said, when the sun, the winds, the rains beat upon the house, the house remains firm. But this is not this simple gospel. Then, any wind of doctrine that blows, the scripture said, people will fly. Tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. This will come and talk it like this. This will come and talk it like this. People are not digging. Dig deep and anchor. Praise God. Now, it is on the is part of the effect is what make people now we're coming now to the the required righteousness now part of the effect is what make people feel that that every, everybody has made heaven so anybody that dies is called to glory it wants no, not die called to glory Home call, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 transit to heaven. I used to put that in poster. Now, especially if that person was doing some form of good works, was a nice person. The person was kind. The person was affectionate. The person was a philanthropist kind of person. Giving that person has gone to heaven before I even died. Then, not even just make it that that, that person was a re- churchy person, was a religious person. In, in the go church, where were In the, ah, he, he's called, now, where is he going again? God, uh, straight, heaven. Praise God. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. Let's take our text. If we raise to our feet, please. Matthew 5, verse 20. Chapter 5, verse 20. Yes, yes, we are taking it together as a text. We raise our feet, please. Matthew chapter 5, verse 20.
Are we there? Okay, let's let's all read together. Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. Let's go. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. May the Lord add blessings to the reading of his word. Let's be seated, please. The required righteousness, knowing what we worship. Accept the righteousness. Now, how people t- look at this thing is that once the person has any form of righteousness at all, and the, 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 the person is passed into heaven straight away, any, any amount, level of righteousness the person can present, the person is passed up into heaven. But here Christ is saying something. For the entering into heaven, the cut of mark, thank you, we write jam. It's not by writing jam. <laughs> it's not by writing jam. Then when you have written the jam and finished, then the people, the board will come and put, cut, the school will come and put cut off mark. Then if you don't have that cut off mark, if you like, desire to re- study medicine, if your cut off mark not reach 280, nothing. Except there's back door or something. See, but Christ was saying here, so, except your righteousness exceeds Get higher than that of the Pharisees and the scribes. He shall in, in no case, not get they would take judge that case, in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, now, I think it's something that people ought to know about God. It's something that people ought to understand. Romans chapter 10, verse 2. Let's read certain things. Acts chapter 26. I'll read Acts. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Verse 2. Verse 2. Before you read, please. Um, see, understand like this. The Pharisees and the scribes, these people, they were righteous people. <laughs> and their righteousness had a Height. He gets it in tall. He had a height. But the thing is that it stopped, or it was cut off. It stopped at a particular point. And Christ was saying, except your own gets taller than their own, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay, let's see what their righteousness looked like. Romans 10, verse 2. Romans 10, verse 2. Yes. For I bear them record. And I bear them record that they had a zeal of God. That they had a zeal of God. But not according to knowledge. Not according to knowledge. We will come back to not according to knowledge. That they had a zeal. Now, if it is concerning zeal, they were zealous towards God. They were zealous for God. Praise God. We are, we are looking at their righteousness. I'll read Acts chapter 6, verse 5. 26, 26, verse 5. Please, um, Acts, no, John, John 5, John 5, 39. I'll read Acts chapter 26, verse 5. Now, now, it says, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify, that after the most strictest sets of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Okay. Pharisees, that he said, now except your righteousness exceed the Pharisees. They were the most strictest sect. Uh, according to the law, touching the law, they were that's they so narrowed down on the team until the discipline concerning God, concerning the things of God. 
I would rather tell you that they were zealous. Okay. Please, that scripture. John chapter 5, 39. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Now, that's what we were saying earlier, that they believed in eternal life. And they believed that they had it. Praise God. Uh, let me read Acts 23, verse 8. This is, for the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection. There is Sadducees, not Pharisees. Though. The Sadducees say there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit. But the Pharisees confess both. You see, the Pharisees, they believed in resurrection. The Pharisees, they believed in angel. The Pharisees, they believed in spirits. So they were, <laughs> they were doing well. Praise God. Now, the, uh, Matthew 23, verse 15. Matthew 23, verse 15. Matthew 23, verse 15. Yes. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land, to make one prostrate, and when he is made... To you see, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Ye compass land and sea. That is, you go over, you go to a near extent. Land, you, whether you cross water, you go. What you are trying to do is to make one disciple. That's a proselyte. One convert, to convert one person. You go to any, any land to convert one person. Yes. Aya. see <laughs> so they, 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 they were strong on evangelism please as we are talking just be looking at the church system today because there's a zeal you see somebody will pursue you with every to come to my church come to my church what is the apple for your church you come to my church come see there's a zeal then there's there, there's strictness you find some of the sects very strict, like uh, 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 deeper life and the holiness brethren and all that stuff. Very strictest set, different settings like this. Okay, please, sir. When he is made. Ye make him twofold, more than the child of hell than See, yourselves. Now, now when, 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 you have, when you have converted the person, the person becomes two times. Well, we, before the person was converted, the person was, was, was once, well, once a child of hell. That's his, his due for hell. Once. Then when you convert the person and come, the person becomes two times due for hell than you. Not to convert them. See? Now, they, they were good. They were strong on evangelism. Okay, and um, please, that's same 23, verse 25 and 26. 25. Yes. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. For ye make clean the outside of the cup. Now, they were very good in making clean the outside. They were very good in holiness. And of the platter. Yes. But yeah. within, they are full of extortion and excesses. Within. Now, they were very good in washing a person outside. I'm, I'm, now I'm talking very well, especially to our deeper life people, and all this. Um, remove that, remove this, remove that. Do like this. Don't use this. Don't use. Very good, very good in doing something, cleaning up the outside, but inside is filled with excesses and extortion and every manner of nonsense inside. The, the next verse was now Jesus. saying something. Yes. Thou blind Pharisee. Thou blind Pharisees. Cleanse first that which is within the cup. Now see. I don't know how we we'll say it. The Lord is giving us the order of doing things. First, 
a person is coming, the thing is, first, cleanse the inside. It's not the outside first. When you move this room, it first the inside. That's the important thing. Now he said, cleanse first the inside of the cup, cup and, platter. and platter. That the outside of them may be clean also. Now see where the mystery is. That's why it is no man that is doing it. If you are able to cleanse the inside, the outside will be clean. It, that one, it will follow. It's not you that is removing it. You that is, there's what is able to cleanse the inside. It is the word, the water of the word. When somebody comes, give, give him the water. Give him the message, what we are saying. When we give the thing to the person, it washes the person inside. Then when the inside is washed, look at the outside. It will come outside. It will show out on the outside. But the Pharisees were very good in managing the outside. Taking care of the outside, but nothing to cleanse the inside. Kumuyi has nothing to cleanse the inside. I was saying, Kumuyi was the one that was saying, well, he joined Adibu to say, let's all religion join together and everything. What cleanses the inside? And cleaning of the inside is not, uh, that shall not, that shall not, that, that shall, that, that's not cleaning of the, they, That's what they were doing. That shall not. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. So, if you notice, these men, they, they were, they had high righteousness. Now, the question is, what do we more than these people? What, what do we get? Because he now said that, except your own righteousness surpasses their own, they will not enter. They run around for evangelism, have zeal towards God, put, present, put, take, arrange the outside man, arrange things up and down. The person comes out and you say, Kai, this one is a... This one cannot be a, 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 a carnal person. This one definitely is a holy person. I'm looking at the person. Yes. But what, what, so what do we more than this? Now, he said, accept your righteousness exceed. So we are back to the first place we read. He said, they had a zeal, but there was no knowledge. So the thing that stopped their righteousness from getting higher than that was a lack of knowledge. It's something that they didn't know. Yes, it's something that they didn't an understanding that they didn't have. Now they needed it so that their righteousness will exceed, but it didn't go. They rejected knowledge. Now, what knowledge is that? John chapter 6, verse 29. I'll read verse 28 and 29. John chapter 6, verse 28 to 29. Um, it says. Now, and please, sir, help me with John chapter 15, 22 to 24. John chapter 6, 28. Is that? Yeah, 28, okay. Then they said unto him, what shall we do that we might walk the works of God? Now, the works of God is what gives you the righteousness that is required. Now, now people, are working, people are doing their own works. That's what they think, what they feel, how they see it. How now Kumi is preaching his own. Uh, 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 is preaching his own. Um, uh, what's the other one? Oh, yeah, Kilome is preaching his own. Now, each with their own works. So, every denomination is identified by its own works. I understand. Catholics, they are preaching their own. But they saying, What shall we do that we might walk the works of God? And now Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God. That he believe on him whom he had sent. Simple. How do you come by the righteousness of God? Believe on him whom he has sent. Now, when he sent somebody to you, what is happening is that the person is going to come and tell you what to do. The person is going to come and tell you something. The person is going to bring some understandings to you, some revelations to you. Now, if you believe the person, you will accept what the person is saying. This is the work of God. This is how to come by that righteousness. That exceeds it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Please, that scripture I quoted. John 15, 22. John 15, 22, yes. If I had not come and spoken unto them. Now see, if I had not come and spoken unto them. They had not had sin. They had not had sin. But now they have no clue. If I didn't come and preach. If I didn't come and deliver these things that I said. Now those men were sinless. There was no fault. 
if we didn't if we have not received a message if we have not received a messenger to this age this thing that's happening would have been okay nothing wrong with it at all he said but now that i came and preached mm. please sir but now they have no cloak for their sin they have no cloak for their sin the next 23 yes he that had it he that hated me hated my father also In, he that hated me hated my father also if i had not done among them the works which none other man did they had not had sin but now now have they both seen and hated both me and my father? There is a problem here. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's John 6. John 6 verse. Matthew, uh, sorry, John 15, 22 to 24. John 15, 22 to 24. Thank you. Okay, now let me read John 13 verse 20. John 13 verse 20. It says, now, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. How do I receive Jesus? Receive who he has sent. Receive Jesus. Receive Jesus. Give your life. Jesus. This is receiving Jesus. How to receive Jesus is to receive who he sent to you. Now, if you are able to receive who Jesus sent, it is counted as you have received you have received Christ. Now, and then, whosoever receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. So it's complete now. See? So this is how to receive Jesus. When the denomination say, have you received Christ? Have you received Christ? No, we're understanding it from a different point. It's not to come and confess, I love Jesus, I, I, I accepted, and no. Receiving Jesus is to receive whom he has sent. So, question, whom did he send? Um, we, yeah, we will now finish uh, in Revelation. Revelation chapter 1, please. Revelation chapter 1. So, people have, many people have received Jesus, but they, they don't even know whether he, sent, whether he sent people. They just received him as spirit. I don't understand, though. I, but they don't even know whether he sent anybody. Revelation, yes, Revelation 1, verse 10 to 20. Let's just read 10 to 20. Revelation chapter 1, from verse 10. I was in the spirit on the days of the Lord. Now, I was in spirit on the last day and heard, and heard behind me a great voice I heard a voice speaking behind me I saw a trumpet saying I am Alpha and Omega I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last the first and the last and what thou seest and what you see write in a book write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia okay unto Ephesus, Ephesus. and unto Smyrna yeah. And unto Pegamos, Pegamos, and unto Thyatira, Thyatira and unto Sardis, Sa- and unto Philadelphia, Philadelphia and, and unto Laodicea. Yes. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Who is this one? And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Now I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. In the midst of the seven candlesticks. One like unto the Son of Man. One like unto the Son of Man. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. Yes. And girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Yes. His head and his hair were like were white like wool. Yes. As, as white, white as, as snow. snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Yes. And his feet unto like unto fine brass, mm-hmm. as if they born in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Mm. And he had in his right hand, in his right hand, seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp, a sharp two edged sword. Okay. And his countenance was as a, as that of the sun, shining in, in his strength. strength. Yes. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. This is Jesus. Okay. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear, Fear not. not, I am the first and the last. Mm-hmm. I am he that lives and was dead. Mm-hmm. And behold, I am alive, alive forevermore. Him. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Yes. Write these things which thou hast seen. Okay. And the things which are and mm-hmm. the things which shall be here after. Yes. The mystery of the seven stars. Now, take note now. The mystery of the seven stars. Which thou sawest in my right hand. Which you saw in my right hand. And the seven golden candlesticks. And the seven golden candlesticks. The 
seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven stars are the messengers of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which you saw are the seven churches. Amen. Now, see, the between Christ and the churches, there were stars. Seven. Now, how do you receive Christ without receiving the stars that he sent forth? See, he said, he that receiveth whom I sent. Now, this is Jesus. And he said, in my right hand, I'm holding seven stars. See, from when the gospel came to the Gentiles, down through until this last age, the rapture, seven stars were standing in his right hand. We are not saying men that preached. We are not saying men that God used. We are saying men, these angels of the ages that God sent to bring the light to the age. That's what we are talking about. There are seven. In all past uh, no, men are preaching. Men preached. Uh, no, but the ones that God used to bring the lights, there are seven. Now, if you are able to receive these ones that he sent, that would be receiving him. That is the righteousness of, of God. That is the work of God. Praise God. Now, read it in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. chapter 22 verse 16 yes i jesus have sent my angel to testify i love jesus i believe jesus i have received jesus i jesus have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in to the churches. testify unto you these things in the churches thank I you am the root. okay thank you sir now i jesus have sent my angel so people are completely ignorant of the fact that it's like they don't know the ones that know decided to reject it or something that jesus had seven angels people don't understand this one that jesus he said he said and i miss i've sent my angel that jesus sent certain people into the churches now people don't have, have that understanding that's where righteousness could not exceed praise god praise god the righteousness of god is to believe whom he has sent. That's where it ends. If you are able to believe, receive, walk in what they have given, the light that they have given, now that person is walking in the righteousness of God. But I've continued to Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. But I'll cut it off here. Malachi 4, 5 and 6 said, He said, Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet. Christ speaking. I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day. He said he, said he will send the prophet before destruction okay now for those of us like this who have come out by his grace who have an understanding of these things our what we are now expected to do matthew 23 verse 23 he says matthew 23 verse 23 i'm rounding off on that scripture Matthew 23 verse 23. Yes, Matthew 23 verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Yes. Hypocrites. Mm -hmm. For ye pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. They omitted the weightier matter of the law. Judgment. Judgment. Mercy. Mercy. And faith. And faith. This ought ye to have done. Now, see. This ought ye to have done. And not to leave the other undone and not to leave the other undone now to us who have received who have gotten this part the weightier matter because all those works and stuff they are not the weightier matter you see but to us who have been able to catch the weightier matter now we ought to have done that and we have done that now we're saying the other part too we are not supposed to leave it undone so if your righteousness exceeds if you now have faith that shoots your righteousness above that of the pharisees now don't forget that, that the pharisees had z so we must have z the pharisees were holy so we too will be holy the pharisees were, were strict disciplined now we too will be dis disciplined that is we are not supposed to have that one and leave this part undone so it was adding to it to get it to be taller. So it's not as though we carry this. And, um, 
uh, our eyes of understanding and then no discipline our eyes of no zeal concerning the things of God. Let's gather. Bang. No, nothing. No. It's adding. It will make it taller. You did not remove this part and throw it away. Praise God. So we have gotten this part. If this part here is lacking, zeal, um, um, works, tightening, all those things. No. You have to address that. Because he said we should not leave that one undone. If you don't address that thing, then it comes down again. Praise God. When we're supposed to stand on the other one. This is the required righteousness. Believing on him that he has sent. May the Lord bless us in Jesus Christ's name.